everything is going to be fine. I promise you, it, it will. There's really nothing wrong in the world, or with PD2 right now. Well, I guess I just tortured the analogy or spoiled it. I want you to look at the current state of the presidential election in the United States. Everybody is very upset. Again, I've been studying politics in earnest since I was about 10 years old when I was trying to figure out why everybody was so upset about Bush v. Gore. And it seems like every year the Republicans always elect Hitler and the Democrats always elect Stalin. I'm not sure why we keep doing this. But either way, everyone is very upset because we have these two running for president. See this guy, oh, I don't know what I said, oh, I don't remember. I don't want to I'll maybe choose my words. There's some movement. Okay, they're having a down year. And everybody is very upset about Trump versus Biden too, Electric Boogaloo. And from an outsider's perspective, or sorry, from my perspective, I should say, I don't really care who wins. Um, they're both very similar on the three issues I care about the most. Um, first off, I'm a First Amendment absolutist. I'm an extremist on that point. The next thing I care about is geopolitics and how the world is going to react to American foreign policy. And lastly, I care generally about the economy. Well, before I go into what these two have on those issues, why don't we just run through the past three? Obama was radically vitriolic to the First Amendment. My favorite example of him hating on the First Amendment was him investigating journalists that were not just writing things nice about him, they just weren't being nice enough, so he investigated them and their families with improper subpoenas. Um, Reporters Without Borders, which is a left-wing organization, dropped our freedom of speech ranking and our freedom of the press rankings to on par with pseudo-democracies in South America after that one. That's how bad it was. Bush was a fan of the Patriot Act, and I don't think I need to go into why that was a First Amendment disaster. And Clinton didn't really have much to say about what people do with their mouths, other than the women in his administration. On geopolitics, Obama could be summed up as do nothing. Bush could be summed up as do one thing massively wrong. And Clinton could be summed up as do everything wrong. On the economy, Obama was about bailing out the unions and the auto workers and the banks. Bush was about some tax cuts and bailing out the banks. And Clinton was about do whatever the hell Newt Gingrich wants. I don't care. So... For the past 24 years, at least in terms of the things I vote on, our presidents haven't been very good. First Amendment, geopolitics, economy, they've all just sort of been asleep behind the wheel. But the last eight years, and I mean eight years, of Trump and Biden, things have been better. Now on First Amendment, Biden is one of the only things holding back the progressives in his party who are openly hostile to the First Amendment. So if I have to choose a Democrat, I'm going to choose the super old one as opposed to the progressives that are waiting in line to take his place. Trump has desperately tried to do things for freedom of speech, but the conservatives picking up this issue is brand new. Remember, they were openly hostile to free speech in the years leading up to this. It was only because the liberals decided they were suddenly done with free speech that conservatives picked it up. So I have very little faith that they care about free speech uh, other than a passing moment. On geopolitics, Trump and Biden have been largely the same. I mean, Trump instituted tariffs against China. That was his large move. And NAFTA 2.0, which is not really the North American Free Trade Agreement point two. It's a straight trade deal. It's not even free trade. But those things worked. And as Trump likes to tell us, the globalists are taking over and we have to fight them. So Biden, the chief globalist, obviously would have rolled back Trump's policy. Oh, no, he didn't. He kept them on. He kept the tariffs on China. He kept the... Canada, Mexico, Canada trade agreement, and moved on. And in terms of economy, well, I got news for you guys. We are dealing with inflation, and Biden may have passed his silly little Inflation Reduction Act, but didn't do much. Most of our inflation is coming from COVID and the boomers retiring, and that's about it. And most of the economic growth that might start slowing inflation will kick in in like five years when the boomers stop retiring and most of our trade deals keep putting pressure on China, which is going to happen with either party in charge. So everything's fine. And yet still, about 10% of Americans across the political divide have cut someone out of their family over politics. 25% if they identify as progressive. People tend to get emotional. We like to think of ourselves as rational creatures, but we're not. We rationalize our emotions. And that's kind of what I want to bring you to when we are talking about Project Yellow 2. 
the beta is not there for you to give balance feedback on. It just isn't. I mean, here's the man himself, right? And what I don't seem to understand is all the doomsaying that happens every single season. My class has been nerfed, my class hasn't been buffed, and everything is always just fine, if not great. It's perplexing, to me, honestly. But again, it, it really isn't when you remember that people are not rational. They rationalize their emotions. So why don't we take a look at, just quickly, because I don't have time this season to do a full hype video breakdown, let's just talk for like five minutes on some of the things they've gotten right over the years. Number one, quality of life. We seem to forget that every season, while we complain about the balance changes and what class has and hasn't been buffed, Every single season, they have consistently put something in on quality of life. They don't, I don't think they've neglected it a single season since season one. I mean, between gem stacking, click to stash, the DPS meters, the kill meters that they're adding. I mean, that wasn't even necessary, right? This whole season's been about buffs, and yet somehow, in the middle of all this, they were like, ah, we figured out how to put in kill meters. Isn't that neat? Like, the quality of life here compared to even standard AAA games, is better than them. And yet, we still have complaints. We still have problems. Uh, the devs are ruining every season. Um, did we all forget about the graphics updates? Go back just a few seasons. Revert your pluggy to season three and, and just look at it. Y you, you almost forget that what they've done with this game. Just... Think about the gear updates, right? I mean, I mean the graphic updates on the gear. Whenever they added a new piece of gear, go look at an Akarats. The custom art they put in, the attention to detail. There's just things here that other games lack. Other games don't have. It's that dedication. What about the map changes? Every season, this is such a small thing to overlook, but every single season, we are playing an ARPG. Got it. It's the same boring colors flashing across your screen, but they will make sure that eventually your class is going to have to see something different in the background, that it's going to look visually appealing to you. Just by changing up the maps and switching up the immunes, they're dictating how people need to play, or dictating what people will see when they play is what I should say. Now, let's not also forget for a moment the just amount of build diversity that exists. I mean, take a look at the Paladin skill tree. Just the combat skill tree alone is a completely different thing than anything that was around, not just in LOD, but in Season 1. I mean, I was actually talking with May Swan on the, um, if you haven't seen May Swan's uh, Magic Arrow Guide, go check that out. Um, but even he was saying, hey, funny enough, after all these years, you know who's lacking? It's Barb. I couldn't believe it. I was like, there's no way. And I started looking through all the skill trees, and I was like, yeah, the Barb combat skill tree is actually the one that needs the most done to it right now. I mean, we've gotten to that point where I have to admit Barb probably needs some changes and some buffs. How about just the season poll, right, that came out? Barb, throw Barb, used to be king of everything. Everyone was playing Barb's, throw or whirlwind. Barb is now on the bottom of the totem pole. Took many a season, but hell, that alone shows that the diversity of builds, the changes that they're implementing here are phenomenal. And lastly, are we sort of forgetting the amazing tuning that's been done over these years. I mean, on the smallest of things, I was, remember, I can't remember which dev I was speaking to in the, the beta, I think this was two seasons ago, but I was, you know, kind of waxing poetic and sucking their dick as I always do and saying, yeah, great job with the Boazon nerfs, just ignore everyone, it's fine, Boazon needed the nerf. And one of them said, we didn't want to nerf Boazon, you're an idiot. Said we were nerfing enchant sorks helping Boazons. And it sort of blew my mind, I was like, I. You really weren't trying to nerf Boazon? They were like, no, we found out people were doing this and we decided to cut that out. We were just shaving the top end off. Same thing with the demon machine nerfs when people were like, oh, that's on summons on. I learned this after they talked about the Boazon nerfs. Nope, that's not a nerf to summons on, guys. That was a nerf to proc builds that were exploiting the demon machine. That is the level of tuning and attention you could expect. And yet we're upset. And yet every year there's a doomsayer out there, either on Reddit, devs only care about streamers, Someone in the class build section saying that their class is bad, it's been nerfed, it's not going to do anything. Man, it just reminds me of the politics in this country. It really does. And at the end of the day, I keep thinking the same damn thing. It's all going to be fine. See you in the season. Chill out. 
Give some constructive feedback if you are doing the open beta. And have some fun. And touch some fucking grass. <laughs>